Well, good morning or good afternoon or good evening. My name is Steve Brady. I am an extension educator from Warren County, Ohio, in the southwest corner of the state. And I want to talk with you a little bit about uh, cultural intelligence and expanding your cultural competence as a camp counselor. I've been doing this for about 19 years, and um, I think this topic can bring about a lot of increased connection for you and your campers. So let's get started. There's really two goals that I'd like to accomplish in this very short uh, video for you. And one is to increase your cultural competence to know what it is and what cultural intelligence is and how it can help you to be a better camp counselor. And second, to examine and understand how personal bias, your own personal bias and assumptions really can get in the way of connecting with all your campers, not just the ones that you like. Now our brains are an amazing part of our system and they have the amazing capability of processing billions of bits of information per second. However, when we're any, anywhere close to maximum functioning, we're only really processing about 2000 bits of that information at any one given time. So you can tell there's a lot that really goes by us that we don't tend to, to really get uh, when we go about our day. In these next slides, I have some images that I want you to take a look at and to see what different things you can see in the image, because there's more than one thing that you can see. This is our first example. What do you see in this picture? Look at it real close. Well, hopefully you've seen an uh, image of a face, kind of the outline of a face, and you've seen the word liar written in cursive. Now, if I turn it in the next slide a different way, maybe it'll become a little easier. Now, can you see what it says? It makes a difference sometimes with how we turn things in our perspective. The same thing about being a camp counselor. Sometimes when we change the way we look at things and change who we look at, then a whole new perspective comes into focus. Okay, what about this one? What do you see here? Hopefully you see the word good outlined in black and the word evil in the center outlined in white. Two images, same picture. All right, let's do another one. What do you see in this image? My hope is, is that a frog immediately jumps out at you as you look at this picture. But what else is there? Can you see it? If not, change your perspective. Be open to seeing something new. If you can't see it yet, let me help you out in the next slide. Does that make it a little easier? What do you see now? Hopefully, the head of a horse. So two images, a frog and a horse, are both in the same picture. But did you see just one or did you see both? If you saw both, maybe you have some advantages in being a camp counselor and seeing things that maybe other people can't. All right, I've got another one. What do you see as the mistake in the words inside this triangle? Go ahead, look at it closely. To some, it may just pop out. To others, it takes a little while to see with the mistake. Hopefully, after careful looking at this picture, you saw that there is two, there are two thes in this sentence, Paris and the, the spring. Now you may be wondering, why, <clears throat> why can't I see the mistake that it's so blatantly in front of me? Well, the process with our brains, as I showed in an earlier slide, processes so much information that many times we gloss over and we don't see things that are right in front of us and we tend to discount or discredit them. And because our brain wants to make sense of everything that we see. And so when the person looks at Paris in the, the spring, well, their brain automatically knows, well, this sentence shouldn't have two thes in it. I'm just gonna kick that one out, but not even process it consciously. So that's what we tend to do sometimes um, in public and in other people. So ultimately the images that I showed you comes down to this. 
it's easy to miss something that you're not looking for. So that begs the question, as a counselor, what else do you miss or what else do we miss as a camp staff about our campers who we have at camp? Who do we not see? What things about the campers that we are in our care do we not pay attention to that we should that makes our effectiveness greater and our connection deeper? I thought I'd just throw this in here for fun. Uh, I love to travel and I love maps. And as you can see in the poster behind me, uh, it says Germany. My wife is from Germany and we try to visit there every year um, to help um, connections with our family in Germany. Well, this map on first notice, you may think is wrong or upside down. But really, if you think about it, the world is in what shape? It's a sphere, right? So when you're looking at the earth from space, and you look at uh, what directions are east and west and north and south, depending on where you are in the, in the universe, it could be different. So really looking at a map and looking at anything is really about perspective. So that begs the question, what perspective are you taking in looking at your campers? Is it just a cursory glance at who they are because they remind you of somebody in your past? Or are you looking a little deeper and finding more to connect with? In the camper's individuality. Now, this slide really gets at what I'm trying to, to uh, get across to you um, in this session. It's about an iceberg, and the iceberg uh, really only shows 10% of what people see, but the rest of the iceberg, the most important part, the 90%, is really beneath the waterline. So really what we need to do as, camp, as counselors and as camp staff is to help lower that water line uh, with the campers that we come in contact with at camp. So that what people see, their dress, their eye color, their height, their weight, their uh, appearance, those things are not just what we take the camper to be, but what's hidden below, some of their fears, their aspirations, their goals, their dreams, that we start to see some of those things too. And that really becomes the most important part with connecting with our campers. So really, if you want to confront your own personal bias or um, prejudice or your stereotypes toward others, you first need to be self-critical. Pay attention to what's going on inside your own mind about how you feel about other people, especially people who are different, and that includes your campers. Um, you have to first pay attention to how you react to them. Once you realize that and are more self-critical, then you can start to change your behavior toward other people and you catch yourself in biased actions. If you're favoring one camper over another, well, why are you doing that? Is it because you tend to like or likes things about that one camper? It doesn't necessarily mean that you need to treat them different. Then once you've fig figured out and changed your behavior, <clears throat> then you start to share your experience with others. Then it becomes kind of a habit that you're not um, confronting that personal bias anymore. So really it comes down to this. You need to be willing to challenge yourself and to improve your camp counselor skills, you've got to get curious, especially about those people who are different. And different, meaning those things that you don't naturally gravitate towards. If you want to expand kind of your cultural competence or your cultural intelligence, you've got to be willing to get curious and challenge yourself. Hope you found this helpful. Now there are going to be a few questions that you'll need to answer. Good luck and have a great summer.